Now we're going green mega eagle. Alright folks, how you doing? So uh, today we'll have a look at the um, the new dump truck. Yeah? Uh, I think it's a wing it, I'm not entirely sure. The the data plates are a bit scuffed up and illegible. Um, the reason the reason I haven't had it running sooner is because uh, the gearbox is completely split open. Yeah? So uh, I've now got a new gearbox. Um, it's not quite the same. Uh, so we're going to pull the gearboxes and try and decipher the data plates and see whether they're both spinning in the same direction and, uh, and everything else. Um, might, uh, might pull the new gearbox apart, don't know, haven't decided yet. We'll have a, have a little look. Um, one of the bearings at the end is exposed, it should have a little cap over it. Um, uh, but either way, let's, let's pull them out and see see what's what and uh, and once once it's moving under its own power we'll, we'll go around and um, tidy up the rest of the machine. I haven't had this engine running yet, it's a uh, single cylinder dutes. Um, the Winget have always used listers and petters or lister petters um, but there was a, a brief period in the 90s when uh, when uh, the factory shut down so I'm, I'm guessing that's when this machine's from. Okay, so this is the box that came out of the dumper. A um, little bit of a uh, little bit of greenery growing on it. Very nice. Um, what else we got? So the the damage was actually quite a lot more uh, severe than I'd originally originally seen. That's that was the the obvious crack from when it was installed, and I didn't really bother looking at it too closely after that. Um, obviously, there's, there's got to be a you know another crack that goes with that first crack and it's split all the way along here so that bit sort of peeled out um, hadn't noticed that there's also significant damage to the uh, output case you know that's, that's burst all the way along there don't know don't know what's happened to this um, I should imagine uh, someone's had a bit of difficulty starting it and um, tried for a bump start you know probably probably dropped it into first and dumped the clutch and just flipping shredded the bolt. Okay, so the original gearbox to this dumper was a 40 mic 814 Sierra 101 and the potential replacement 40 mic 8 one seven. Okay, let's have a little look and see what all that means. Okay, so we're on a oh, Newage's website, PRM Newage. Um, you know, they've got a nice, uh, nice table. We all like a nice table, don't we? And the only, the only real difference between these boxes, they're both the same output rotation in relation to the input. Um, the only difference is the gear ratios. And the the original to this dumper box, um, 1.4. The original, so the the replacement 1.7. So that means uh, we'll go slower, but um, what? Have a bit more, a bit more oomph. That's absolutely fine by me. The the difference is uh, fourth gear. Fourth gear is a one to one. I think that's why it's written like that. And what uh, throughout the throughout the range of first, second, and third, um, they're just like a little bit lower on this on this replacement box that we've got. So we've got uh, the original was six, two point five nine in second, and one point four third, and the replacement is seven point two nine. It's quite a big difference there in first should should mean it's excellent for towing and uh we've got an even better chance of blowing this box up <laughs> this new box i don't want to put it in if there's knackered bearings in there so we'll just uh, pull it apart it's not a big job like they're bloody basic things um i've got to switch the uh you can see the the clutch linkage is on the right hand side of that one and the left hand side of this one so we've got to flip the linkage round or swap the bells um just flip the linkage whatever and uh and that's about it nice gear stick on this one as well yeah so 
Uh, hopefully that's pointing in the right direction, somewhere near the seat. Um, yeah, let's let's get it pulled apart. Okay, so we're missing the uh, the cap off the off that bearing there, and I've just noticed we're missing an entire roller out of this bearing here. Which you know you might say that's not the end of the world. It probably probably still gives it a bit of support, but um, there's more where that roller's gone. <laughs> She's still lurking around in here somewhere, eh? Okay, so having having looked over both these boxes now, um, uh, and seen the price of new new parts for these boxes, and had a look for standard bearings that will fit in here, um, and not being able to find them, uh, what I've decided to do is, you know, rebuild this box with the good cases and their shitty internals. Uh, keep all the internal. The only difference between these boxes, by the way is this final drive section so that you can see there that that um, main shaft gear uh, is much bigger than this one and this driven output gear is much bigger than this one yeah I'm pretty sure that's the only difference these I count the teeth on these uh, well just this big one actually uh, same in there and they're, they're all the same all the same gears um, and obviously I've got two more of these boxes, uh, slightly different, but you know, good internals will be nice because the other two boxes are locked up solid. So what we'll do, we'll keep this bell housing, because um, it's already got the decent clutch mechanism, uh, won't even bother taking it apart. We'll have to whip that off the um, thrust bearing, just so we can get the bolts off behind it, and then take this out in one piece with the slightly nicer looking oil seal that definitely hasn't leaked or it doesn't look like it's leaked um, same with this shaft this shaft should have a, a better bearing in the back of it um, move all that over to this box and then we'll have to take the output bearing out of here the cracked housing stick it into that one and the same with the needle bearing that's going to be the tricky bit the only thing we've got to watch out for is I'm pretty sure that this uh, this shaft here machined the end of that bearing case out or someone just hammered it on I don't know or maybe it's because it doesn't have a gasket I don't know but either way I'll I'll make sure when we put the, the needle bearing from that one which is a very dodgy thing to do by the way because uh, they're they're meant to be pressed in and discarded when they're next removed aren't they um, but I think we can manage, um, you know, I've done dirty things like that before, we'll be alright. <laughs> yeah, and we'll go about it like that I suppose, and then we'll have lots of spares for the next project.
1501 stayed in the shadows of his lower part. I like a guy wearing his boots. Get Okay, so we got um It's actually three gears in reverse. Three gears in reverse. I don't know why I thought these were four-speed boxes, but um, I'm sure that's enough, isn't it? Either way, selects all gears nicely. Um, back together, should be should be oil tight. I had to reuse the crush washers, I don't have anything that big, unfortunately. Um, but the end of the world, I had to change one later. Um, unfortunately, we're in the middle of a storm right now, so uh, I'm going to go and throw this back on a dumper. But I, I don't suppose the camera's going to last long out there. But uh, you know, anyway, we'll get this put back on anyway, and then I suppose we've got to try and get the thing started, haven't we? Okay, another horrible day. I've just been uh, trying to figure out the engine controls. Um, box is back in. That's all lovely now. I had to remodel the exhaust. Um, exhaust. The other bit. Gear lever, <laughs> yeah. We just uh, I had to cut and um, reweld it with a, a sheath over the outside because I'm using the gear stick off um, the, the the gear the original gear stick was just a bit of pipe, um, but uh, I've put the gear stick off the replacement box, but that points in the wrong direction. That clashed with the um, with the skip raising lower uh, valve. Um, I'll show you in a minute. Um, I am, so you pulled the injector to see what the what the engine controls are doing. I can't I can't find any data on these engines, you know. Um Dutes F1L 210 is what I've got in this. Um there's very few of them around in England and uh, uh you know those that are are, um, are all electric start. I've not, not seen another ma manual cranker um, you know, on eBay, there's, there's not even anything on YouTube. Anyone manual cranking a F1L 210 or 208, um, they're just all all electric start. Um, yeah, and like I said earlier, and it, it's an absolute pig to turn over, isn't it? The second you drop the lever, like that's it, you feel like you're going to snap your arm off. Either way, um, so I pulled the injector to see which uh, where the fuel cutoff is, because there's a there's the throttle control. Um, which is actuating the governor, I suppose, or something. Um, and then there's a there's a separate separate control which is fuel shut off. So um, yeah, obviously with the with the fuel line off, um, you can see where you know it's either getting fuel or it's not. And from that, you you tell the position of the fuel shut off lever, isn't it? Um, I stuck the stuck the injector back onto the fuel line just to see if it's clear, but it's not. It's uh, Pretty, um, pretty coked up on the end there. Uh, I I can pick out the the pintle holes, um, but they're they're not uniform. Yeah, so well, just uh, you know, it's horrible out there anyway. I can't take the camera out at the minute; it will get soaked. I'll, I'll spend the time and clean it properly. We'll stick it in the ultronic bath, and then then she should run, I suppose. Um, Oh yeah, and other thing I want to try uh, in the ultrasonic bath, I've got a heated ultrasonic bath, it's quite good, um, but always wondering what you should use to clean it, yeah? Um, a lot of people just put a little bit of dish dish, uh, dish soap in there, innit? Like that, that works okay, it's not astounding. Um, normally, like with parts washers and stuff on ferrous components, people will use a caustic solution because uh, it won't attack the, the steel. Um, uh, but you get any sort of brass or alley or anything like that, brass it pulls the, it just leaves you copper. Yeah, <laughs> like, um, and you've got to be careful, we have uh, brass injectors, uh, continuous flow injectors on the aircraft engines, isn't it? Uh, an alley it will just eat it. So uh, what I'm trying is a, a catering grade decarburising powder. This is pretty cheap, yeah? I think it's like uh, uh, 15 quid for this tub. So it's not expensive, and it claims to be safe on aluminium, and it's non-caustic. So uh, 
obviously the injector is steel, but um, you know, if it performs well and decarburizes this, then I'll uh, I'll be trying on on a, on a lot more stuff. Yeah, let's give it a go. Um, decarburizer has done a pretty good job, you know. Not perfect, not perfect. I'm just gonna get a bit of wire roll on the end of the pin all, but um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. Will certainly make cleaning up larger items a lot easier. Okay, I'm just uh, just getting ready to try and fire this thing up. This was the oil filler um, plug. <laughs> And just uh, just kind of top the oil up before I try and start it. But, um, that happened. And it's pissing down the rain at the minute, so I just knocked a new one up out of a uh, out of nylon nylon six, I believe six or sixty six. I never remember which. One's good for chemicals. One's really strong. Uh, this is the slightly softer one that's good for chemicals.
Okay, so uh, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering why I didn't just uh, clean the entire fuel system down to start with. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I should have done that. This is the wrong order to do this stuff in. You don't clean the injector first and then clean the fuel tank, do you? Uh, I suppose I was hoping I wouldn't have to pull it off because uh, this is yeah, everything just turns into a longer job, doesn't it? I just wanted this dumper running, um, but obviously now that I've jet washed the inside of this tank, um, I've knocked a scab of rust off and the the tanks perforated um, I will fix this at some point I'll get some sloshing compound uh, I kind of feel like welding or brazing a tank is a bit of a false economy because um, the whole the whole base of this tank is going to be going to be perforated isn't it like I've, I've found the one spot that wants to leak now but if I fix it and start using it then there'll be another spot over there won't there or something else um, so that's why personally I, f I quite like the sloshing compound but um, well, uh, I've got that tank um, just a little, little plastic fuel tank I'll have to put another another hose bar at the top somewhere another little tank fitting if I can find one um, at some point uh, for the diesel return but um, I'm not sure I've got anything floating around at the minute I might do, I'll have a little rummage. Okay, early early results with um, putting alloy, aluminium alloy, in the uh, catering grade decarburizer. Um, pulls the tarnish off it quite nicely. Um, the, the glass, that was, uh, yeah, there's still a little bit of the scum left behind from red diesel there. Um, but that was a, uh, It'll do the hard deposits, but not the um, not the grease. Should have got the grease off first. Always with an ultrasonic bath, I suppose. Um, I don't know. I'm just seeing what what it does, and I'm lazy. <laughs> uh, those those deposits are softened, but not removed. It's not been in all that long, um, and it's not all that warm yet. Um, you know, my finger wipes it off now. Um, but the main thing is at the minute that it's a. Uh, it's not um, chewing up the aluminium, which is nice. So we'll, uh, we'll leave that in there a bit longer. Custom uh, fuel return line fitting for the tank. Let's pop that in. Okay, I just got the. Um, New uh, new fuel tank on and it fired right up, so uh, I'm not shutting it down now. Uh, here you go, I'll show you.
Okay, so the clutch. But we just uh, we've only got a tiny bit of material proud here. Uh, I think it's a combination of things. The um, pressure plate isn't too bad. The friction plate is uh, nearly down to the rivets. Um, the pads are a little bit loose as well, which you know wouldn't definitely stop it working, but. Um, the pad plate split as well. Right, um, I don't know how much of the engine noise you could pick up on the camera, but uh, that's that's all there is to the uh, to the current exhaust. Um, whilst we're waiting for the clutch, uh, you know, I'll carry on tidying it up until that comes. Um, let's see what we can make out of this fire extinguisher. Uh, Okay, so what's the inside of my muff look like? So we've got the uh, short stack there. See, I perforated the end of that. Washer on the end already had a hole in it, that's convenient. Uh, that goes in the end of the... We can call it... Uh, <laughs> uh, we can call it a muffler now, can't we, hey? Now that, uh, now that it's no longer a fire extinguisher. Uh, and then we've got the other end uh, with a pipe again washer on the end of it it's only perforated on one side though so you can't see the holes there but there's holes on the other side so uh, and then a baffle plate with holes in it and that will get sandwiched in the middle when this all gets welded together and uh, our Higgs horse casses will have to pass through one set of holes then into a big chamber another set of holes then into a small chamber and another set of holes and then out into uh, out into the environment. Eh? Okay, we just had it moving, the uh, clutch is all better new clutch in there. Uh, let me just pop this cover back on the back on the prop shaft and uh, we'll go for a spin, eh? New that, um, exhaust that. That's nice. They're nice. It quietens things down to uh, not too quiet, but a nice level. Yeah, God I love this thing already. 